And good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, or where, whatever it is, whatever time it is where you're at. This is Rob Draven back with another one of the, one of these. Uh, but it's really just part two of Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. Uh, if you have, if you don't know what this game is, uh, I would advise you to go back to part one. Uh, but just a real quick thing is that this is just a point and click adventure made by Legend Entertainment. Uh, but uh, yeah, I get more a little more background during part one. So uh, this is actually just a continuation. So as I, I so we're picking up here where I left where we left off in part one. So I had just finished the chocolate, and saving saving the saving those uh, chocolate tree, the cacao trees and uh, facts and chocolates alive and well in the future and. The really scrawny guy that you see as the main antagonist in that chapter is now, uh, or dies 10 years from then at 1,100 pounds. So, now that we've done that, we're, now that we're back here with this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the next story. So, we're, there's nothing new going on here yet. <clears throat> See, there's nothing else too much going on. I mean, we've got Squish here. He's moved. But I think we'll talk. go ahead and talk to Mike here. So we'll talk to Mike Callahan. Good job, Jake. You couldn't have done it without us. So, what now? What now? Well, that's up to you. There's a lot going on tonight. Such as, well, let's see. Josie's all in a snit over something. You could see what that's all about. We've got the two drop-ins. They could probably use some chatting up. Or you could go see what's keeping Piotr. Okay, so you, you can pick here. Whether you want to do some talking, you can see if you can turn up anything exciting. Uh, we're going to go see if Piotr's home. We want, to talk, we want to go find out about Piotr. Want me to go see if Piotr's home? You know, he's been down lately. How can you tell? Yeah, he's cynical, but this is worse than that. I wonder what? Well, okay. Figure it this way. The guy is what? 80 years old? 100? 200? And he's alone. He's always alone. Doesn't seem to bother him. He never says anything about it. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I would have agreed with you. Now, I'm not so sure. Tell you what. You want to do me a huge favor? Great. Go get him. Bring him back here. But only when you're ready. Don't say yes till you're sure you're ready to take off. So we can kind of pick here. Hmm, uh, hang on. Nah, we, we need to go. Let's go find out where, what's going on with Piotr, so. Mike, I'm at your disposal. Tell me what you want me to do, and I'm there. Great. Now, you know where Piotr lives, right? A couple of miles down the pike? Sure. Good. Hop in your truck and head over there. If Piotr's there, see if you can get him to come back to the bar. If he won't come, see if you can find out why. But don't pry, you know? Eddie's got me well trained. Now, if he's not there, this is bad. See if you can find any clue as to where he might be. Why are you so worried about him? He told me something in confidence that I don't want to have to share with you unless there's no way around it. Enough said? Yeah, I'm on my way. Jake? I'll be back in a flash. Hope so. Okay, so now we've, been, now we've got Piotr. Well, you know what? We're going to go... Uh... We're gonna come come here. We're gonna we're heading out of the bar. We're leaving again. <clears throat> so we kind of come out here, and uh, here's our truck. We're gonna we're gonna drive our trusty truck down. We're gonna drive a couple miles down 25A to Piotr's place. And we go, huh? There's a lot of boxes and stuff out here. Um. Oh, York Easter. When it's time to move, move, move York Easter. <laughs> hope you hope you like these because we're gonna get, we're gonna get I'm gonna give you a little bit of entertainment with some of the some of the puns from this. So we pull the antenna out of the hole. There goes our high fidelity sound system. So um, you know what? Well, we got some issues here. Well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this license plate. And then you know what? I I don't. This guy's just sitting eating. I'm gonna put. I'm pushing the ram. And I'm gonna look at his bumper sticker. I'm 
Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> just try, try, just try to strike a friendly conversation. How late is work? Do you see anybody working? It's just like, you're not from Y.E., are you? And then you sure me you aren't. You don't even know who Y.E. is. He explains that York Easter has been cracking down on the drivers for every little violation. He doesn't never knows what he's being spied on. You ask about Piotr. All he knows is the owner is supposedly in or on his way to the Transmillion Alps, Alps in Romania, that he's having his stuff shipped out overnight at tremendous expense. So, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? We're gonna open the window. We're gonna keep opening the window. And hey, we finally get it open. And then that phone's a little too far away, so we're gonna use this antenna and snag it. And we're gonna use the telephone. So now we have all these numbers. We can call 911, we can dial out, we can call the operator, we can dial information. We can call this clock, this this KL5 number, or we can call this KL5 number. Well, KL50931 was the number on the bumper sticker. So now we're going to call this. York Easter Van Lines. Last year, over 20,000 families put their trust in York Easter. <laughs> so here we go. So you a good moving company? So you a good moving company? When it comes to quality, sir, you can't touch your keister. How do your prices How do your prices compare with other moving companies? Well, we like to say you'll discover deep, deep savings when you look up your keister. <laughs> I'll let you go now. All right, sir. Thanks for calling. Okay, doing this on purpose because there are more there's more stuff here. We're gonna call we're gonna call back. It's just <laughs> there's more lines, so. Your keister van lines. You're sitting pretty with your keister behind you. Do you enjoy your work? Oh my, yes. Your keister is a wonderfully tight little firm and management is very progressive. So, I didn't touch a button there. We'll try this again. I think it, I, they may not have that la last line uh, in. Do you enjoy your work? Oh my, yes. Your keister is a wonderfully tight little firm, and management is very progressive. Yep. So they, they don't have the last little bit that all the employees have their hand in it. Uh, how long do you think you How long do you think you can drag on this stuff about keisters? I'm afraid I don't follow you, sir. Never mind. I was just trying to make a little trouble. Oh, I know how that can be, sir. It's the same way here. We always have something up at your keister. <laughs> we always have something up on, at your keister. I'm hanging up now. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. We'll do this one more time. And this time we're actually going to... We'll, we'll play around the options, but then we're going to go into the actual, like, thing. Your keister van lines. You're sitting pretty with your keister behind you. So we've done that. So now we're going to register a complaint. I need to register a complaint against one of your drivers. Oh, no. We're getting a lot of complaints tonight. What was the license number, sir? Y-E-V-L... 117. Thank you. One moment, please. I have that driver's listing, sir. And what exactly is the nature of the complaint? Oh, he was whistling dirty songs. I'll contact him immediately, sir. Thank you for letting us know. My pleasure. Bye bye. So there's more. There's more to this with well, on that one. If you uh, don't do this, <coughs> we're gonna wait. Beeper goes off as Josh drops up a mouthful of sandwich, says something that sounds like old oh, thip. Walks around in the truck's truck scan calling to his dispatcher. So now the driver's gone. Well We can't really do too much here. We got the boxes, man. I don't think I could really put myself in there and be hidden, because I think I need to go to Romania to find out what's going on together. So, you know, we got a steamer truck here. We're gonna pull out these bolts. And then we're gonna open the open the trunk, and then we're gonna get in. And so as soon as he finds out, you get you get in, pull it close, and it clicks shut. And you're trying to figure out how you're gonna get out again. And then you but then the movie man returns and angrily finishes loading up the truck, and then which includes this trunk. So we're gonna we spend the next day being buffeted about, subject to freezing temperatures, dropped generally treated like a piece of meat. That sounds about right when it comes to to shipping, it is, doesn't it? Do you constantly say to yourself, Jake Stonebender to the floor rescue? <laughs> if you don't, uh, so this is a nice little pun on uh, Piotr's name because his name Piotr's name is Piotr Florescu. 
And so, yeah. And so, uh, you develop strange sensations, confidence, power. As you can easily stow in any old tram steamer or freight train. <laughs> Excitement as you realize you've discovered a new, very inexpensive way to travel. It doesn't involve stealing anyone's plane tickets, which didn't exactly sit right. So, one thing to point out, um, do not do this. <laughs> because if you're, if you're in, like, free, if you're being flown in, a, in an airplane, if, unless you're in a pressurized cabin up that high, you will, uh, you will get hurt. You will die. You, will, you won't be able to breathe. You will most likely die. Now this music, it's just, I just hear the underlying tones of this music. So we're a series like no money at all, no, no no number of dice credit card lady you can make travel reservations, get replaced with credit cards or send you for free pills. We're gonna keep going. And everything comes out. Voice sounds like truck familiar plex is a finality to leave. Now the voices sound like that Piotr. Truck gear is loaded. While later you step here and sounds people in the man say you gosh see bridge for the truck. I was going to knock and inform you that you could come out, Master Stonebender, but I was afraid I might give you heart failure. <laughs> so yes, here's his butler. Uh, uh, are you all right? Yes, but no, I mean, I'm confused. I'm so sorry. Perhaps you didn't know we were expecting you. Master Piotr informed us you were coming. He did. Yes. I believe his exact words were... A man named Jake Stonebender had done something very ill advised. When he arrives and gets out of my substitution trunk, treat him with utmost respect but inform him that his trip was unnecessary. I am then to make arrangements to have you sent back to America immediately. First class, of course. He did. Huh. Well, if he knew me well enough to know I was coming for him, he should have known me well enough to know I wouldn't leave without him. What? That's okay, I know what I'm talking about. Of course. Well, Master Florescu anticipated you would refuse to depart for at least a while. Feel free to have a look around and make use of Master Florescu's trap and driver if you wish. Let me know when I can make your return reservation. Okay. So now that we've done this, well, you know what? This is an adventure game. If it ain't nailed down, you take it. So we got a headless box. We're taking the headless box. I suppose it's natural for people who travel in boxes to be a little grabby of other people's possessions. I'll return it. Um, what is it? One of the master's magic tricks, I believe. So, painting. We're gonna stand behind the painting. Ooh, I'm deaf. I'm deaf. Yes, Master Piotr told me about your joke-telling abilities. I'm so sorry. <laughs> This one's a nice little fun one. We're gonna we're gonna take these. Will that be all? Or are you still browsing? I'm still browsing. <laughs> Waiting for it to pick him pick him up, so So uh we're coming through here. Just coming over, we're seeing stuff. Hey, we got a book of magic. So we take it, so he says nothing. We're gonna open this box. Oh hey, we're gonna take the palm coins. Are you a magician, sir? No. Oh, I couldn't help but admire the way you make things disappear. <laughs> so we got some palm coins. We got a book of magic. Thumb through it. So she thumbs through the book, falls up, keeps falling open page 13. So the headless woman. In the headless woman, the magician affects a most startling illusion suitable for stage or parlor. A box is fashioned with two mirrors hinged at the back and meeting in the center. See workshop plans in the companion volume of this set. <coughs> Excuse me, dang. In performance, the assistant's head is clearly seen through the front of the box. Her hands support the box where it rests upon her shoulders. Magi closes the box. The moment this is done, the assistant draws the mirrors closed about her face. A small movement easy, easily covered. If desired, daggers may be thrust through holes in the box, thus further disguising the scene that runs vertically where the mirrors meet. Magi then opens the cabinet, revealing the vanished head. The process is reversed the Magi re wishes to reconjure the missing head. So this this book here tells you tells you how to do a magic trick. We're going to need to use this magic trick in a little bit. But at this point, we have taken everything we really need to do. So we're going to we're going to talk to the driver. Evening, Squire. 
Good evening. Are you the one I talked to about driving? That's me, sir. I'm the driver. Would you be wanting me services? Definitely. Well, that's just fine, sir. I'm just a little surprised, is all. Why is that? Well, you and Master both arriving in boxes and all. I figured you'd be, you know, taking it on the wing, so to speak. Not that there's anything wrong with that, sir. No, I'm not like that. Oh, well, okay, sir. I believe you, sir. Where you wanting to go somewhere now, sir? So, yeah. Yes, please. Only I don't know where I can go. Well, let's see. Right now, unless you know any specific addresses you want to get to, I could just take you downtown. It's a city? I wouldn't call it precisely that. But it's a happening place anyway. Listen to the hoopbeats of the traffic in the city. Linger on the sidewalk so the lepers aren't pretty. <coughs> How can you lose? So maybe it's squalid there, but maybe I'll find Piotr, although I don't know where. Let's go downtown. So, how many of the themes? Some 60s hit. We get, we get in there. Try prowls along. We get drop dirt rugs with cobblestones and drive rain horses. Here stop. we go, sir. But, Lord, how everybody's looks and discourse in the street is of death and nothing else. And few people going up and down that the town is like a place distressed and forsaken. That's Peep, sir. But he put such a negative spin on it. <laughs> So now we're waiting for, uh, we're now in. My God, what happened to this place? What happened to these people? Nothing, sir. At Snafu, sir. Situation normal. All for... Wow. Mm -hmm. I know, but this is normal? Well, not entirely, sir. Everybody's a bit spiffed up for the weekend, you know. Got my best bib and tuckers on. Anyway, I'll be waiting right here, sir, when you're ready to push on. You're just going to sit here? Oh, got me magazine and me corn nuts. I'm good. Have fun, sir. Okay, so now we want to look around. We got, like, help, I have no arms. Help, I have no legs. Well, we're going to, we'll, we'll use that in just a, just a few minutes. Well, probably just a couple minutes here. But the different stores, you got Werewerths, Werewerths. There's a, there's a Star Bucharest. Hey, Casimir's place. That was, sounds a lot like Callahan's saloon. We got. It looks like we might go in there. There's our tra There's our driver. And then we'll come around. You know what? We're gonna. We're gonna do this. We're gonna sit here. We're gonna. We're gonna. Well, actually, first things first. First things first. We do have to do something. We're gonna start. We're gonna start off by going into Starbucks. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we got a copy of Vlad magazine. <laughs> Grumpy woman. Got a bunch of things here. Hey! There's a glass jar. Hey, there's a piece of chalk. Well, we can use that chalk, so I'm gonna take the chalk. And now that we've done this, um, well, this is a nice place. We, I mean, besides the chalk that we just kind of stole. There really isn't anything here for us to do, so we're gonna leave it in. Now keep in mind, again, I do know what I'm doing here on this game. I'm trying to play around, make it a little bit interesting. Hopefully you get, get a kick out of it. But first, what we're gonna do here is we need to write, write something on top of this here. So we're gonna write here. So we got, let's see, we'll choose the seven of spades, side spot to yes, perma shave. We'll sing for food, sick on the inside where it doesn't show, the end is near, Matthew 7:15. My child is on the honor roll at Edwood High. Help, I'm too sarcastic for my own good. Learn to play guitar, 20 Bonnie an hour. Help, my dog up and died. He up and died. Help, I have no head. Next, different Stokes cast member. Well, we're gonna, well, we, you notice the, the people that are giving, getting stuff for uh, the, uh, like I have no arms, I have no legs. Well, you know what, help, I have no head. I'm gonna write that on there. So, um, we're going to wear the headless box. Then we're going to open the headless box. 
It's hot in here. Okay, so we need to remove it. Because I forgot to do one major thing before we come back to this. I need to sit next to this barrel. I thought I could do it beforehand, but if you don't, you gotta do that. So we're gonna now we now we're gonna wear the headless box. Now we're gonna open it. See the dim light pierced by standards, even though it's very close, and there's no head on your shoulders, only empty box. Pass by begin to come and a few of them actually gasp. Oh my, this one is the most pitiful of all. If you give him money, you'll just spend it on on what? Hats? He's a fake. He had a head a minute ago. Yeah, but you gotta give him an A for execution. You hear the footsteps receiving. After a few moments, you close the box and remove it. Then you collect the coins and stand up again. So we just we just successfully begged for money on the street corner uh, by saying that we had no head, and the headless box helped us. So we look at the body we just got. You've got a goodly number of money enough to get anything you might need. So this is basically we now have unlimited money sake of uh, the, this chapter. Um, so at this point, you know, let's go, let, we gotta go talk, to, let's go, we gotta go into Casimir's bar, but we gotta talk to the bouncer first, so. Me, Tor, who are you? So, Joe, so you can see here, uh, we're actually gonna, we, we wanna know what the cover charge is, because we wanna get into the bar. What's the cover charge? Tonight, Curse night must have curse. Get in free. So it's like ladies' night. Rawr. Okay, so we now we know it's curse night. Well, let's see if he gives us more information. Me, Tor. Who are you? So what's this about needing a curse to get in? What's this about needing a curse to get in? Must have mark of curse. So I've already got, what do you see? Where do I get a curse mark? Isn't this a discriminatory policy? Well, you know what? We're going to do this one. Where do I get a curse mark? All gypsy. Woman. All woman gypsy. Okay, so now we're going to do a couple things in preparation for, uh, we got to get a curse. Well, we're going to come in here. Hey, there's some wolf paint. I'm gonna take some wolf paint. This isn't a real plant. It's silk. The plant looks offended. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> so we have we have a silk wolf paint blossom. Now we're gonna leave. Now we're now we're gonna go into werewolves, and we'll have a little bit of fun in the in werewolves because there's some uh, there's some stuff you can buy. Or try to buy. And so we'll enter Werewolves. Alright, so uh, let's buy the sale items. Being a typical New York, you pride yourselves in always being equipped with cold winter weather. So apparently we don't need to buy these sweaters or any of that, or the, the sale items. So we'll, uh, let's go over here. Let's uh, buy the Overstar. Oh, you know those drugstore remedies don't do me any good. Oh, let's buy the toys then. I'd like to buy some of these toys, but I don't want to have to carry them around with me. We do mail order. Okay, maybe I'll wait till I'm back in the States. Then just give you a call. <laughs> uh, the makeup tournament. Makes more sense to get one of these duty free shop on the way home. Okay, so let's buy some sunglasses. None of these sunglasses will fit me. I only have two eyes. We can fix that. We can. They say if one of your eyeballs gets eaten out of your head, two will grow back in its place. Do they? It's worth a try. Come closer. No. <laughs> Good old clerk. Well, you know what? We're going to buy some wax lips. I'll sell you those, but I'll have to see your ID. Show the clerk your driver's license. Fortunately, reciprocity... <laughs> I don't know, reciprocity, whatever. It's reciprocal laws. Works so that the, this Romanian reads English just as easily, easily as you speak Romanian, so that he can read it inside the lips. Um, body tattoos. Uh, we're gonna buy a body tattoo. So which tattoo? We have the motorcycle, the pen, 
Pentacle, Pentacle. Ah, uh, we're gonna do Pentacle. For the test, my Pentacle. You know how to get these off? Soap and water? You have to chew off the part of your body that's got the tattoo. Here, put one on your foot and I'll show you how to do it. No. <laughs> Apparently he wants to eat, eat you. Um, sword points. That's the term for one's tattoos. Pick out a good sword so the sword tattooed a blanket for him. That's perfect. I didn't know you were a host. A what? A host. That's the host trademark. The thorny sword on the forearm. What's a host? Come here, I'll show you. No. Just come on. No. Oh, then take that thing off. You're making me hungry. The way he says hungry relaxes as you gastro gastrointestinal tract. You hurriedly rub the tattoo off. We're gonna get. We'll buy a few more of these. Heartbroken to have. That's good for the tattoo suits. So hand over some body and purchase broken heart tattoo. Did you know that people can function almost completely normally, even if they only have one shoulder? I didn't know. Come here. Why? Just come here. No. Come on. No. You tourists are so stingy. Those shops are what's left of them. Put the tattoo back Bring on. Bring back my Bonnie to me. <laughs> Good choice. That's a special one. What do you mean? It usually starts to work in about 10 seconds. What do you mean? What does it do? Eight, seven, six. What's going to happen? Five. Four, three. Yeah, it's like before you go script while the attention just getting before the cat reaches zero. What would have happened? The clerk barely smiles. <laughs> okay, snake raptor of the sword. We bought the sword of thorns, so. I'm sorry, those are reserved for the ladies auxiliary. Okay, so apparently the sword the snake raptor of the sword is reserved for the ladies auxiliary. They call me out here on tarantula. Now, where should I put this? The rump is usually the meatiest part. Look, could I get your assurance that you're not going to try to eat me? If you'll just give me one finger. I'll give you a finger. I'll give you a finger. <laughs> uh, skull restored out of my spider. Try to apply part of it won't come off the back. You find one of the adhesive surfaces, touches another adhesive surfaces, which instantly eliminates any chance of getting it on right. Plus, you crump up the whole thing and throw it in the waste bag to get it on the counter. So, you tried to try and failed. Ah, uh, tentacle call to skull. You roll up your sleeve, carefully apply a tentacle filled skull tattoo to your property, and it flexes you off to try and make the tentacle look like it's moving. So, the skull just frowns. Ooh, you've got a thread hanging down from your sleeve. Let me bite that off for you. No. The effect you get from your muscles, you scrape off the tattoo. So it was one of the tattoos. But more of a second body tattoo immediately sink to your arm. Nice arm. You want that? The cook's hand reaches out and grabs your arm. You pull it away, but not before the putrescent, pustulant slime on his hand dissolves the tattoo. Guess you're just not a motorcycle tattoo kind of guy. <laughs> so yeah, you, as you can see, the only one I can really buy is a pentagram tattoo, but um, in this particular case, uh, we can buy some collectible cards. I mean, let's see here. Don't do it, kid. You got your whole life ahead of you. Then you're going to have to retire someday. Uh, by the bones. You probably don't remember, when you were in that crate being shipped to Castle Florescu, you vowed not to bring a lot of crap back with you on this trip. <laughs> okay, so we've, we've done it. We're, we're done with this. We don't need to worry about this. Oh, one minute. There is one thing we gotta do. I just, I like, wait a second. I'm doing this so I, way we don't have to go back into where we're later. If I, if I remember correctly, I, oh, I believe we can do this. We don't have to come back here later. Uh, you come around and you got this tea. We're gonna buy some tea. That'll be all the fingers on your left hand. Pardon me? Oh, did I say all the fingers on your left hand? I meant 22 Bonnie. <laughs> so yes, in order to get my tea, apparently you want to buy tea for this guy, he wants all the fingers on your left hand. Until you question him, and then he only wants 22 body. So, so we now that we've done all this, we're actually going to wear the tattoo. We're going to put this tattoo on. I like it. 
And now that we've we've gotten that, we're gonna talk to our driver. Where are we off to, sir? And then uh, to the old gypsy woman's place. Place fast as lightning. If you say so, sir. She's a bit of a skank, sir. But I wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating maggots, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right off of us, then. <laughs> Apparently, she's a skank. I don't know why he called her that, but hey. So now that we we come out here, <laughs> next swap, swap, next swap gas two miles. A few minutes later, Gypsy Services next right. So now you you come in here. This is the old Gypsy woman. So the way to the window. So when was the last time you had a haircut? You look like a girl. No wonder you're not married again already. What kind of woman wants a guy with longer hair than hers? Ugh. Don't even get me started. Okay, so we're going to talk to her. Wait, don't tell me. I know it already. Your name is Jay. No, uh, Jake. Jake Smoke Enders. Jake Smoke Enders. Am I right or what? Very close. It's Jake Stonebender. Oh, please. It's the same thing. So, who sent you? Tor sent me. Oh, Tor. So sad about him. He was such a nice boy. But now... Ugh. I know, I know. All right, so I gotta get like to get Casimirs. I'd like to get into Casimirs, but they want me to have a curse mark. And so show them your curse mark. I don't have a curse mark, I don't think. Why not? So you can pick here. My dog gate. It fell down between the couch cushions. I couldn't find. It. I'm not cursed. Second thought, I do have one. I'll go get it. So long. Uh, we're gonna say it fell between the couch cushions. It fell down between the couch cushions, and I couldn't find it. And you vacuumed it up, didn't you? Probably, yeah. See, that's why I say if it comes off, bring it back to me and get it properly rerouted. Otherwise, there's a replacement charge. Did you get it from me? I'll look in the book. Uh, no, I don't think I got it here. No, I don't think I got it here. Well, what's your case? I'll get you a new one. So, vampire, zombie, werewolf, ghoul. Uh, I'm going to say werewolf. I'm a werewolf. See? Is that a lovely pentagram? They're usually just a lot of little white heads in sort of a five-pointed star shape. But this is beautiful. Mr. Eisenstadt, did you see his pentagram? I saw it. It's beautiful. What else do I need? I'm not so sure the wolf vein is in bloom. Well, the wolf vein has a head to her. Wonderful. You have any silver? I'm not sure. Try me. Will these do? Give her the palming coins. Wonderful. Wonderful. Makes it your ledger, takes a jar off the shelf, molds it carefully, paints a little spot on your temple. I can feel it taking root. That shows it's waking. Signs a blue, small blue, high intensity, bulb at it for a few moments, and dads away the excess green growth medium with her handkerchief. Stop that. Now listen to me. Don't get this wet for at least four hours. Don't pick at it. Usually that'll make it come off, but sometimes they burrow down to get away from your finger. And don't shave it. Now run along. Go to your bar, wherever it is you're going. Thank you. See you later. You will. You will. And we drive back into town. So yeah, we don't have the palming coins anymore. Don't have the, like, we don't have the wolf's bane. We, we don't need it, though. Sim Salah. In the week of an eye, you're standing outside of the street. <laughs> I still got it. It's all done with mirrors, sir. Have fun now. I'll be right here for you when you're good to go. <laughs> so, we'll, uh... You tore friend. Tore like. I think you would really benefit from Schoolhouse Rock. Conjunctions are very useful for hooking up words, phrases, and clauses. Tor hooked on phonics. <laughs> Tor hooked on phonics. Well, we're going to go into Casper's now. You have Curse Mark. Fell the Shelby Curse Mark. He checks it out, lets you in. <laughs> First of all, stage of intense stage of your young life. So he fills your your Callan hands on Halloween with everyone in costume. But the only night, it's the only night. <laughs> Mike turns up, turns the lights down. Though. 
appears that he can't remember if Cal has his pack on his receptor. He seems to remember both ways. Says some new lighting. The next most obvious is the smell, which is heavy and coppery. The aroma of fresh blood. Callahan smells more like sawdust and beer. But despite the smell of the intimidating crowd, the atmosphere is one of conviviality. There are a lot of laughter and storytelling. You see a lot of belligerent looking carnivores listening attentively to creatures who easily constitute snack time instead. The spirit of Cal's place palpably present, you realize that this place is named St. Casimir may, may come from the same place in time as Mike. Might even be related. Hell, it could even be the same person, although you got Mike and Sentry here who are making the trip himself. But you know what? We're going to talk to Casimir since he's the other place. Welcome. It's a phenomenal place you got here. Casimir Pagetnoff, owner and operator. Jake Stonebender, pleased to meet you. You know, this place reminds me a lot of a bar in the United States. Long Island? That's right. Oh, the next time you see Mike, tell him Casimir sends his best, won't you? I will. Terrific. If I can do anything for you, just uh, scream. <laughs> so there you go. Casimir knows, knows Mike, and he's this is basically the same kind of place as uh, there. We've got the Sullen Man, which I believe actually is Peter, so we're going to talk to him. We're not sure at first, but yes, that's Peter. He looks listless, pale, and far less energetic. Well, 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 it's the man who wears the star. Who's talking about your pedigree? The big, bright Texaco star. Can I trust my car to you, or don't you do brakes? Oh, you'll find out why that uh, hits you hard. Having a drunk friend say something that socks you, the guests of surprise alcohol and despondence make a great glass cleaner for the window and the soul, especially for the basement windows. If you're here to pay your last respects, I'm already dead. Piotr, dear Piotr, come on with me now. God damn you, Piotr, see you now. You're being very childish. You're being very childish. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> God damn you, Piotr, I'll see you in hell. Last one in's a rotten egg. <laughs> Piotr, dear Piotr, come home with me now. No. I come all the way from... I come all the way from America to see you, and what do I get? Smart mouth comments. You know, Jake, you're such an old gypsy woman sometimes. I'm going to drink till sun up, and then you know what's going to happen? You'll turn into a man shaped pile of dust, shrivel like a print until you're a corpse, you'll fade away until you vanish completely. You'll turn into a man-shaped pile of dust? Nope. Guess again. You'll shrivel like a prune until you're a corpse? Nope. Again. You'll fade away until you vanish completely? Nope. I give up. I'm going to turn into a pile of dust in the shape of a man. Didn't I guess that? Nope. So I appreciate your following me here, but my maid is mined up. Now, let me drink in peace. So now Piotr's yeah, now Piotr's hit you hard. Uh, there, there's something about your past, about a, a car and brakes. Not really a good thing. But, um, you know what, we got this jukebox. If you want to try and fix it, go ahead. Just don't take it out of the bar. I can sell it to one of the doctors around here for spare parts. <laughs> All right, well, you know what, we're going to... Don't play B-17. That was our song. Piotr, it's been over 50 years. When are you going to forget about her? What'd you come back here for? I'm asking the questions around here. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> so yeah, Piotr, Piotr's not having a good time. He apparently is depressed about a woman. Who is some days. Well... I shouldn't say that, but hey, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take that conversation for another time. But we're going to take this radio, we're going to stick it into the... <laughs> oh, hey! There's your sense of the roof. It's alive! Alive! Good lord! Spuff on! Oh, dumb, uh, haul it out of the dumbwaiter, dust some, some of the char off. And it seems to work, you know, it's late, we hear words and clicks. So you feel some guilt, maybe imagine we repair the repair the primal force of nature. But what the hell, it's just a jukebox. <laughs> so we're gonna put the jukebox back on the uh, jukebox stand because I mean, come on. 
there's no reason for us to keep it, so we're gonna play it. And you know, he said, you know, Piotr said he didn't, he didn't want, he, like, don't play B17. Well, you know what? Screw him. He insulted us. We're playing B17 just to piss him off. Come series clicks. You fuck you gonna be playing B17. And as soon as it starts, Piotr stumbles off his chair. Didn't I say not to play that? Yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah. Figure out right about shuts off. I can walk myself. Steer him out of the bar. <laughs> so yes, Piotr is a drunk vampire. Right now. I feel sick. Do you have to throw up? I don't know. My head hurts. Let's get you home. We'll storm away from you. <laughs> I don't want to go home. I'm not ready to go home. Okay, want to see if we can sober you up? So he pauses for a moment, closes his eyes, pain scowl across his face. You beat the pain scowl off, and it flies off into the night, hooting angrily. <laughs> the pain scowl. And it flies off hooting. <laughs> well, we're going to come in here. So, um, you know what? I need to, uh, look at the third band. That's What's cool. Orient? Chinese coffee beans brewed as espresso and topped with a dollop of fresh mortar. I've never seen that before. You've never seen mortar on Orient espresso? Molten <laughs> lava mocha java. What's the molten lava mocha java? Habanero flavored espresso brewed at 500 degrees. And of course, I'm now obligated by my insurance company to warn you that the coffee is served very hot. Florescu. Excuse me, but could you tell me what's in Florescu? It's chock full of nuts. The coffee or the town? Yes. <laughs> what's the cappuccino? Cappuccino without a head on it. <laughs> Excuse me, are these beans rare or roasted? Both. There's a small tag on the floor for the mini pick and look at it. it says exclusively roasted for Zoyal and Emirship Alamaliv. Excuse me, is this rare U band for Alamaliv? How many times have you used that line before, hon? Don't. <laughs> what do you do with haha -ha beans? We brew haha. -ha. Brew haha? -ha? Ha ha ha. What do you make out of Toreador beans? Cafe au lait. Yeah, but he has. He, the eighth bit's got him full of his bunch of has beans. Are you good? They were. Got brew ha ha. Okay, so actually, we need to buy the. We need to buy. Still brewing. It takes a while for it to reach 500 degrees. Okay, so now that we've done this, well, we're gonna. Yeah, Piotr. Sasha? How are you? Same as ever. Mm hmm. I think I'll just step outside for a while. Stay here, Jake. We just sat down. This is the woman I never told you about. You must have. I would have married this woman. Ziv and I both wanted to. Piotr. When she met me to tell me she'd picked Ziv, she had lines on her face. I don't... Lines from the bedclothes. From lying on the sheets. With him. I don't believe this. She put her arms around me and called me sweetheart. But she smelled like him. I'm just going... You're drunk, you're being disgusting, and you're embarrassing everybody. I think you should leave. And if you won't leave, the least I think you could do is leave me alone. Come on, Piotr, let's get out of here. I'm sorry, this was my mistake. What the hell happened to you? You know? Come on. So now we lead him out the door. Sit him down in the convenient barrel and pretty much prop him up after some bowsy, head back to Starbucks, offer a quick apology to Sasha, and leave with a cap of Cafe Olay. 
The issue proceeded to pour down Piotr's throat, much to his dismay. But the caffeine and the cap uh, capsaicin do their trick, and with, it, with 15 minutes, Piotr's looking and sounding this will be better. Is she still there? I think so. But I wouldn't try to talk with her again just now. Jake, I swear she's nothing like the woman I left here. I mean, completely different. She looked different, too. Very severe. I'll tell you something, she didn't used to have that Cindy Crawford thing going on with that mole on her face. We don't get cancer, otherwise I'd be worried. What do you get? Too much iron sometimes, a little vitamin A overdose. Could it be a curse mark? I know where her curse mark used to be. That wasn't it? No. Okay, so now we have thoroughly embarrassed ourselves. Oh, hey, look, the, gy the old gypsy woman's in town. And well, I, will I will sit here and say I understand that the term gypsy is derogatory when used in, in certain contexts. Context. I'm using the term in context of this particular character, which happens to be called that. Uh, please understand this is a game, and it is therefore it, entertainment. If you are not entertained, well, I apologize, but I will be using the terms in the game for the different characters, so bear with me. That being said, we need to go back to Star Bucharest for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is these wax lips that we've got, they're just way too, uh, like, I put these on, and you feel like you're going to help I have no class. <laughs> yes, we've got these lips. Well, you know what, we're going to buy that. We're going to buy the second man. Still brewing. It takes a while for it to reach 500 degrees. Okay, so actually, I thought I'd, I thought it could, could buy it still. Yeah, but it looks like i got to go talk to the old woman. What are you doing here? Well, on nights like these, I can make more in town, and then I pass the savings on to you. It's just one more way I make it easy to shop the old gypsy woman way. So we're going to take them off. Hello, Mr. Werewolf. <laughs> so do you and the driver think going? Just wonder how I can get this curse mark off later. If I knew somebody that knew somebody, <laughs> yeah. What if I knew somebody that knew somebody that might be under a curse of some sort? How would I tell this person's person how to tell what kind of curse it was? I'm very sorry. You're going to have to do better than that. If I think somebody might be under a curse, how could I tell? Oh, I don't know if that's something you could tell, honey. I could probably tell if I could see exactly what the mark looked like. But I guess you'd have to get your friend's Pison's Pison here. Okay. So now we, now we know... We are suspecting that that Sasha is under a curse. But now that we've talked to the Tucker, I'm going to go back and start with Chris because I think that coffee's about done, about done brewing. At least I hope it is because I don't, I can't think remember what else, how else, what else we got to do. So I'm going to see if I can buy the buy buy it now. Careful with that. It might be a tad warm. Keep in mind, this is habanero espresso, brewed at 500 degrees. Might be a tad warm. So we're gonna dip the wax lips in there. We feel the wax soften. We're gonna put them back on. Don't let people see you doing this. I'm sorry, calling you hot lips. And now, you know, we need to kiss Sasha. We're gonna kiss her on that curse mark. As, as is clear, you're actually appropriate, no matter how charming the sentiment might have been. Move lips when you're about to speak. I apologize. It's a custom in my country. She first lips gives you a look of exa exasperation at the strange country you must be from. Gathers the newspaper from the spot on her forehead around a curse mark, but you press the hot lips for her skin. She icily suggests that you both sober up, and that's it. Turns on her and walks out. So we just pissed her off and made her leave. By kissing her. But if we look at the wax lips, you notice we've got this clover in the in, in there so that means we now know what's going on 
So keep in mind, we're not going to drink. The we well, yeah, no, we're not going to drink that cup of coffee. So Java's cool off slightly. He's feeling yourself to have to come a bit, a little bit slower. We'll approach him. We're going to approach the wagon now. Back up school off and reharden. However, perfect impression of Saucer's curse mark remains behind. We're going to give give her the whip, lips. This is an impression of a curse mark. Yep. It's not very good. What do you mean? It's great. It's precision. I don't like it. Okay, so she pulls out a jeweler's loop, peers at it intently, swings and grabs a ledger off the shelf. Let's see. Close pins, clouds, cloven hooves. Oh, here we go. Clovers. 11, 121, 232. 232. Alan Pellegrini. Is this from Alan Pellegrini? What, the curse mark? No. All right, don't get huffy. Let's see. 121, Mrs. Murchison. Oh, I gave Mrs. Murchison a clover. Imagine that. Is this from Mrs. Murchison? Look, computer, she said no. Well, I only have an 11. Let me look. This is old. I is this Sasha? I can't read the name. That's the one. Except the history next to the name. Oh, oh, this is a wonderful case. Oh, this is a good. You'll never get this one off. This is a case that drains the case of the ability to experience emotion. No love, no hype, no happy, no sad, no joy, no pain, no nothing. How do we counteract it? This is what makes it such genius. To cure the case, you make an anti -kaisalant. You need tanner leaves, you need, um... Oh, this is going to bother me until I can think of it. It's important, rather. Just a minute. A tanner leaves and is it... No. Make a root. Make a root. Yeah, that's it. And those are hard to get? Oh, I don't know. Now, the hard part is, the third thing you need is the tears of the kaisi. And that's the thing. How do you get tears from somebody who can't cry? You can't. Exactly. I'm so proud of it. It's one of mine, this kais. Original with me. Do we, like, chop an onion? I suppose. I don't know. Maybe even then they can't cry. I never actually made the anti kaisalant before. That I remember. So, get me some tanner leaves, some mako root, some tears, and we're in business. You don't have any of those things? Listen to you. If you had to deal with the people I have to deal with to get tanner leaves and mako root, you wouldn't be such a schmageggy. So the gypsy adds offhandedly the curse was actually ordered by Sasha's new husband and applied by him while she slept. You can practically hear blo Piotr's blood, what there is of it, begin to boil. So in other words, um, uh, basically, uh, the guy that Sasha chose to marry over Piotr um, decided to, to give her a curse that makes it so that she can't feel any kind of emotion. Period. Uh, I guess if, I guess if she doesn't, if she's not happy, she's not sad, just kind of go through life with meh. She isn't gonna care if he's abusive or a jerk to her. Uh, so, yeah, the guy's, the guy's, a uh, total, uh, we'll just leave it with that. You can, you can add your own expletive towards him there, if you like. Uh, but now we, now we have our ledger out, we see that we now have Sasha's address. So, now we're, we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna say goodbye to, to her, and we'll come back and talk to her later. So one thing to point out is that we've already we've already taken care of some of this. So we've got some we've got this box of Tana tea. So uh, it's a box of Tana tea from Tana, a division of Tana Tana Bovana Banana Fana Fafana Be My Mome and uh, Tana. <laughs> uh, we're gonna open the box of tea. We're gonna pull out a single tea bag. And you open the box, pull out a single tea bag, which you assume will do the trick. Obligingly, you give the rest of the box to the vagrant with the arms and no legs, figuring a nice glass of tea wouldn't hurt. Uh, so we're gonna open the tea bag, and now we have our tattle leaves. Um, we're gonna smell the old Java. 
Uh, so it not only smells delicious, but it's probably great for stripping the paint from the inside of your digestion tract. So we're gonna drink from it. He's up to cool Java. It's spicy and tepid. It's basically pretty bad. He's supposed to be bad, so. We drink the coffee, so I guess we do actually drink the coffee now that it wants it's really cool. And now we're gonna we're gonna talk to Master Squire. What can I do for you then? Lead on, Macduff. Uh, we're gonna go with 13. 13, 13, resting place. Resting lane. I'll have you there in two snaps of a tendon. True to his word, he negotiates narrow twist to call the streets, and ten minutes later pulls up in front of a very large immaculate house on a tall hill. Yes? Sasha, before you slam the door in my face, can you wait a moment? You're looking a little better. Thank you. Please do come in. Ziv is not home from university yet, but I'm expecting him shortly. Mr. Stonebender, how lovely to see you again. Please do come in. Okay. Sasha so nervously asks you if you're actually a werewolf. Is that a problem? So she works quietly, she has an allergy. You rub hard, your hand hard on the thigh of your jeans, scraping off almost the entire pentagram display to her. It's one of those temporary things. I'm not really lupine. So I can give you an odd look, but she quickly suppresses it and leads you further inside. So, okay. Please follow me. So we're now in the cavernous living room. Feeling better? Yes. Um, Ziv is too back from university any moment now. I'm sure he'll be glad to see you. That's a lie. Please, Piotr, let's not. Not what? I don't think you came here to bicker with me. Perhaps I'm wrong. No, you're right. We're here to try to prove something. Really? Okay, well, now that we're in here, we're gonna come around here. I'm gonna go in and take the hairbrush. So I excuse myself, go to the lavatory, under the cover of flush commode and running water sink. Slip the hairbrush in your product and bow and return later. Hopefully you weren't bowing too loudly. <laughs> so we have a hairbrush, we got we got some stuff. Um, I could sit on the couch, but yeah, definitely don't wanna she doesn't want to sit on the couch with her. So we're gonna we're actually gonna leave. We we can't do anything else here for the moment. I'm staying here, Jake. Fine. It is fine. If they're alone together, maybe they can work something out. It's certainly not going to happen to you there. At your service, sir. So, back to town, please. Back to town, please, Mr. Eisenstadt. Piotr is staying here. Off we go, sir. Whistling a funeral march. <laughs> All right. So now we'll, uh, we'll come back in. We're now back in town. Um, I know there was... The, so we're now... Sim <laughs> I still... So I'm actually I'm actually stopping that one because it's the same thing. We're going back into Casimir's because there, there, there's got to be some... I mean, we're looking for some Mako Rune. It could possibly be in some schnapps or something. I mean, hey. Go up to the door, some local probability necklace. You instantly spot the addition of a familiar-looking blackboard. There's some riddles written on it. And all the conversation is turned to solve it. You didn't realize riddle that is an international tradition. So, uh, we're going to come in here, and we're going to spin around. There's actually some, oh, hey, look, there's a werewolf in town. We're going to brush the werewolf. I'm going to brush a few times with werewolf scholars, of course. Well, the werewolf purrs softly, obviously, so enjoying the sensation. We have a brush full of authentic werewolves, Dan, and you stop. The werewolf runs for a you, we pet the puppy, unfortunately, and unfortunately, that's all we can get. So we're gonna, t we're, you know, we want the schnapps bottle, so we're gonna take the schnapps bottle, reach out, and deliver it on a fat and huge stronger jewel and under it. You gotta turn like you feel your bottles, you feel your mouth turn to jelly. Loud torch you. You want some? I think he's offering you his bottle, you reach out and try to grab it. Not the whole bottle. You want a drink or not? Slowly latch on to the fact that simply offer you a drink, not the entire bottle. Oh, no, thanks. So we're going to talk to the Fugato now. Hey, bud, how's it hanging? Me, Jake. You know kill I. Okay? 
Sure, man, no problem. Chill. Spill it, bro. What if we got a drink? Uh, what if we got a drink? You give Jake bottle. Yes, what Jake must do? Give Fugato give Jake bottle. What Jake must do? Fugato give Jake bottle. So important about the bottle. Jake need Mako root. Mako root in bottle. Sounds good. You give us the winning answers, we'll give you the root out of the bottle. So we just so now we have to win Riddle Dine again. So we're gonna read the chalkboard. So we got ten clues listed on the chalkboard. Giant moisturizing plant snug. Yard, leak still, leg joint, younger. Permeable, famous marks, spoiled. Grain bid, wind shelter. Scorch, Chicago trains, legal code, massive weight. Otherwise, one lean, aromatic organic compound. Moss, shiv, fluffiness, drawing fluid. Urinated, member of the British nobility, white with age. $5 bill, colloquially, penny, cost. And uh, touched in the head and manta. So, um, so we're looking at it. So we're actually going to talk to the Fugato again. And we have riddle answer for Fugato, we think. We have riddle answer for Fugato, we think. And so now that's how we get to here. And so now we now we're playing Riddle Knight again. If you haven't seen Riddle Knight, as you saw, I have these different things. Uh, if you saw part one. I explained it there, but I'll explain it here just so that you have it. Basically, um, all of these uh, these names, or all of these uh, clues, all like each set of clues gives you a name, and all the answers to all these riddles are going to be in the same category. So, like they like they were saying, like yeah, it, like the examples they gave were would be something like back in. Uh, uh, it back, that's you see in part one. So this one, I'll give you three guesses as to what the common thing is. And if you if you know some of these, you'll probably get it already. But um, yeah, there's this is gonna be interesting. So I gotta remember uh, I gotta remember the the clues here or like the clues. Some of these I gotta remember. Uh... Okay, so uh... so Lon Chaney Jr. I gotta remember. So as you can see, these are uh, these are horror movie actors or actresses. So yeah, so coming in here, I, I just got I, like this one. Some of these are hard only because I don't remember the exact stuff. So I've just got to think here.
Okay, let's see here. I'm trying to think what. Oh, okay. So permeable. I think it you got bore. Carl off. So yeah, so in this case force Carl off. I uh, got the let's see here. So this one, so I will, I, I got to admit here, I actually have looked at, had to look them up just so that I can kind of get to get through this. Um, I, I still want to give people a chance to kind of guess them before I just type them in. But in this case, this one actually didn't quite make too much sense to me. But this one's Christopher Lee. Great actor. But uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to make sure we get here um yeah some of these i don't like because i'm actually uh so yeah you got char and then uh the, then you have a uh, legal code which yeah i don't i don't get some of these um Odds are it's because I'm not thinking clearly. That's not a surprise there. So we have else a yeah, and I guess I guess they they do uh, lean. Yeah, so. So you do something like that, and so this one, there's that. No, oh, and that's why I didn't remember these. Uh, so Pete, for like Pete Moss. Uh, cushion. And then Drawing Fluids, Ink. So, uh, Peter Cushing, and then urinated P, uh, member of British nobility, uh, Lord, and white with age, old, I, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, Peter Lore. And then this one, I can't believe, yeah, Bell. Aloe and like everything there. I think it's C or something like that. But yeah, this is uh, Bella Lugosi. And now that we've done this, quite a team on. Got goes over the board, press softly. That is correct. We have a winner. <laughs> Cow goes mildly up for grabs. We've got to do a dancing glee around you. Don't hurt me. Not the face. Ouch. A promise is a promise. Lead Fugago throws the bottle that stops into the fireplace, then walks over and retrieves the micro root. Shakes the ashes, broke the glass with the root, and drops in your waiting hands. Thank you. Come on back next week, will you? We like winning honestly for a change. Or at least, sort of honestly. What? This is the first time you've spoken to me like a normal human being. Yeah, well, you started it. So you started getting these riddles right. Oh, <laughs> we thought you were a moron. <laughs> so yeah, so basically, the Fugato knows how to knows how to talk normal like human speech. He was like growling at you and all that stuff, and you were all and everything because he thought you were an idiot <laughs> because of the whole uh, no hurt eye, huh? So now we have the Mako root. We now have tanner leaves. 
Well, there's one little thing we still need. We still need tears. Well, I don't know about you. I have allergies. If I got uh, exposed to something I was severely allergic to, my eyes would water up and I'd tear up and tear bad. So, um, we're going to go back to At Sasha's. Service, uh... Sasha's, the 1313 address. I'll hurry this along, sir. I'd like to get back downtown. I'm supposed to be meeting somebody in uh, this person's transport. <laughs> ha, I wonder who he's talking about. So we come back in. Welcome to Valley Side before next Piotr. You know, she's. Oh, she's sneezing. This face begins to quiver. She's got a tick in one cheek. Then she sneezes. A feathery little tissue. Makes you want to slap her around so she can get a real sneeze. She continues to issue, then she finally just does this. Well, I'm going to sit on the couch and, hey, oh, hey, I found a small key. Well, I'm going to um, come here. And this key's got to open something. So, actually, we're... let's see here. There's a drawer in here somewhere. So, we want to do the search drawer. So this drawer. So we want to unlock that drawer with this key. So we pull it open. It's like pull open the unlock drawer. Inside a small bundle of letters. Something looks like it used to be a flower and a small vial with a couple drops of clear fluid inside. Piotr? My letters. I can't believe she still has them. What about these? That flower. I'm not sure. I think I bought it for her on our first date. And the vial? Those are the tears from when she told me she was going to marry Ziv. What a thing to say. She used to be very romantic. So, hey, it's a vial of tears. Well, we're going to take the vial of tears. And then we're going to close this. We're going to lock the drawer with the key. Set the hairbrush in the drawer and lock it back up. Then you put the key back in the couch. Perfect. Slash will never know you've been messing with her deeply personal possessions. Although someday she'll sure wonder how that hairbrush got from the bathroom into a locked drawer. <laughs> and so now we have our, our... I'm going to stay. I know. I'll see myself out. At your service, sir. The gypsies, please. Yes, sir. Seeming as anxious as you are to get back to the gypsy woman, the driver immediately takes you to the downtown area. <laughs> so we're heading back. Heading back. We, we've got our tannelies. We've got our mako root. We've got our tears. It is now time to make the anti-curse sealant. There you are, sir. I'll be waiting here for you, sir. Now enjoy! Enjoy! Probably clicked through that a little too fast, but oh well. We're gonna approach. Alright, now that we're here, let's uh, give the tana leaves to her. Did I tell you to give me this? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. I'm sorry, I can't keep it straight. Eighty years ago, I remember like it was this morning. This morning, I remember like it was eighty years ago. <laughs> what was it for? I need all three, the Tanner, the Mako, and the Tears. So, you look thin. Have you had your tarot read lately? Or a card trick? You like card tricks? No, not really, or no, uh... No! You sure? Yes! That's only because you've never seen me do card tricks. Watch this. Over the next 10 minutes, you're asked to deal out the deck four times. Memorize six different cards, count out five packets of various sizes, and politely refrain from commenting or visibly flinching at the bad side of hand. Now, let me get my little sponge rabbit friends. All concentration is momentarily turned elsewhere. You hurl yourself out of the vortex and break the spell. <laughs> Slowly the world turns back to normal. Did I want to make a root? Yeah, remember? You just mentioned it a little while ago. I'm sorry, I can't keep it straight. Eighty years ago, I remember like it was this morning. This morning, I remember like it was eighty years ago. <laughs> what was it for? It's no good unless I have all three. Otherwise, I'll lose track. Have you had your bumps read? Yes, but thanks anyway, or no, not You know what? We're going to say no, not nearly enough. No, not nearly enough. You bow your head before the old gypsy woman. She proceeds to meticulously touch your scalp all over. She makes lots of little noises of surprise and confusion as she identifies the bumps and furrows of your cranium. You're next, Mr. Eisenstadt. Oh, that'd take you all night with me, Mum. I got a lot of bumps. That's all right. I don't mind. 
So yes, we just got her. We just got her bumps read, and then uh, she just offered to uh, bump the driver. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, we're gonna give the give the tears to her. What are these? Tears. Okay, and the anti-cursalant. You don't remember? I'm sorry, I can't keep it straight. Eighty years ago, I remember like it was this morning. This morning, I remember like it was eighty years ago. <laughs> what was it for? Well, give them to me. Every second counts. Why? Is there a time limit? Yes, Sally Jesse comes on in five minutes. <laughs> Wonderful. Everything I need for the anti kaiselant is right here. Because that turns around and gives you a wink. I'm going to mix it up right here in the sink. It smells like turpentine. Looks like India ink. So we're we're now we now have the anti cursulant. So I mean just we just need to give it to Sasha and everything will be fine, right? I mean Well, um we're gonna enter the trap. You said this, sir. So now we're gonna go to Sasha's. Sasha's, the thirteen thirteen address. I'll hurry this along, sir. I'd like to get back downtown. I'm supposed to be meeting somebody in uh this person's transport. Yep, so we're we're back. And oh hey! We got Piotr, we got apparently got Sasha, we got this other vampire. In your absence, Sasha's husband, Ziv, has returned. He, Sasha, and Piotr are at the dinner table making string conversation, which tastes as good as it sounds. Ziv, I'd like you to meet Jake Stonebender, Piotr's friend from the United States. We reach out to shake hands with Ziv, and Ziv offers his own sand is cold and rock solid. Nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine. Am I interrupting anything? We were going to eat, but it seems I'm the only one with an appetite tonight. Sasha, how about some wine for our guests? Thanks anyway. I'm not having any right now. Me either. Just me again, I guess. So he goes back to finish his dinner. Sasha waits for his next command. So, oh, we, well, we've got an obeisant wife, apparently. Well, you know what? I could try to give it to her. Sasha either doesn't know about her or is in denial of her, of her own curse. This besides, that's not her beverage of choice. So, you know what? We're going to drink it ourselves. And now that we've done it, now we're going to do something. We're going to offer some blood to Sasha. So, just for goodwill, we offer our wrist to Sasha. Piotr once explained that in polite Transylvanian society, a human will offer his wrist or in more intimate circumstances his neck to a vampire, and the vampire may choose to drink or not. If the vampire chooses to drink, he or she must not draw enough blood to harm the human or turn him undead. This supposedly constitutes an offer, an anticipated acceptance of a trust between the two. The vampire is not to take unfair advantage of the human's weak will and fragile life, and the human is not to open the vampire's coffin in direct sunlight or drive any large objects through its heart. So she does this, she she takes a drink from one hand, uh, asks for the other one, just not so that way he doesn't overtax it. She pokes your skin, sucks quietly, swallows, laps your wrist, catch the last drops, thanks you. And then you can see the moment that the anti-cursal and first hits her. So she gapes towards the sleeve of Zip for a few moments. What? What's the matter? Sasha, control yourself. Looks for a moment she's about to scream and sit, but instead she draws her hand back and slaps him across the face very, very hard. Because Vex slaps his face, fist into Sasha's face, you think you hear a crunch. Piotr's already in motion, but not fast enough to protect Sasha from Ziv's punch. Sasha crumbles her gun, Ziv grabs Piotr by the neck and throws him onto the table. Ziv wraps his hand around Piotr's neck and pulls. It's if, if Ziv is not trying to choke Piotr, but trying to actually separate Piotr's head from his body. Um, so yeah, there's some. Oh hey, we got a steak bone. Staring at crawling belly down, says, well, Ziv is choking. Well, you know what? We could try to stat. We could try to we could give the stick bones. You know, we're going to give it to Sasha. She she needs one. Crouch by her, press the stick bone in her hand. She bites her lower lip, puncture it hard, gets to her feet. Ah! Ah! Well, why? Figure it out, Professor. That's what I did. And Poofy's dust. Don't you know red meat is bad for your heart, baby? Piotr, are you okay? Sure. I'm not strong, but I'm wiry. 
Piotr. Sasha, would you come with me? Oh, Piotr, I can't. I'm, I mean it. Excuse me, I'll be outside. So you kick around outside for a while, talk to the draft driver about everything except vampires, mummies, werewolves, and bee movies. Piotr comes out after a while alone. Two of you climb the trap, head back to Piotr's castle. On the way, Piotr doesn't say anything. The two of you know that he can tell you anything when he's ready, and you'll be ready to listen. Early the next evening, Piotr asks if we're ready to go back to Kansas, or Long Island. <laughs> you coming with? Guess so. So, the two of us. She says she doesn't know herself, hasn't been herself in 50 years. Wants to learn to fly again, she says. Spend some time alone, you know. Hmm. It's a chick trip. Yeah, I know. But I was hoping... Hey, you got your whole life ahead of you. No. My whole life is behind me. My whole death is in front of me. <laughs> so he packs a few things, has a brief conversation with Chives behind closed doors. He comes out and joins you in the trap, directs the driver where words. We picking up snacks for the trip home? We can if you want, but we'll be home in a few minutes. Explain. Didn't you see the time machine? Yeah, but it wasn't working. Did you plug it in? Nah, uh, I didn't think of it. <laughs> You're gonna love this. <laughs> did you see the time sheet? Well, yeah, I did, but it wasn't, plug it wasn't working. Did you plug it in? <laughs> so we show up, deals behind the time machine, plugs in, and he slips the and stop, piles in the machine. Come on. Come on, Jake. a boy. Why not? So he sets the controls for his house where we left a truck where we left our truck and on the same night we same evening we stowed away. Piotr wax the side of the machine and poof we're in Piotr's driveway. Apparently time and space work just fine with this. Uh climb into our truck, find, drive the few blocks back to Callahan's. So now we're waiting for it to load back up. Oh yes, you've returned all of Peter's magic tricks to him, along with Star Bucharest Chalk, and even put a brand new old coat hanger in the truck. Twenty minutes. Jake, see, I knew you were something of a private dick. That's why I knew you were the man for the job. Peter, good to see you. Everything okay at home? I think so. Good. A drink? Ginger ale. You got it. Okay, so that is it. We that is it. We we've, we've rescued Peter from his thing. Um, so if you don't know a little more, a little more about Piotr's backstory, Piotr is, like, as you can tell, Piotr normally doesn't drink. Um, this is because, well, he is an alcoholic, but he's a second-hand alcoholic. He gets drunk off of helping guys who drink too much. He, basically, he kind of, he'll, 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 get, he'll, he'll, uh, bite them. And, and basically use his use his uh, his ability to basically suck the alcohol out, or at least suck a good chunk of it out. Uh, and it, there's there's some interesting things. You find this out actually in a different book. Not, it has not. You will never really find out about this in game, at least to my knowledge. I haven't. I didn't. Dig, I haven't dig, dug enough into Beowulf's backstory to do this. So, um, so yeah, so now Beowulf's guys just gonna chill here. We're gonna have fun with him, or he's gonna be having fun right here. Uh, there will be a little bit of advancement in his story, just a little bit, but not, not quite yet. But the next one, the next story that we have, we've got, we still got the biker dude sitting in the background, kind of chilling. Uh, but the, the, the next story is gonna be about this guy called Squish. And so, uh, with that, I am going to go ahead and save, and we're gonna, we'll just overwrite the save, the first save we did last time, so that way we're using the, uh, same game. But we're gonna call it good right here, uh, saving our game, uh, so that we can kinda keep these kind of episodic in a way. So, that'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, hit like and subscribe, and everything and I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful night.